Welcome, colleagues. Uh, thank you so much for making the time. We're going to do an enco. Enco is an Italian word for 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 repeat. Did you know that there are much, or you just grew up dancing for music, and then if it's nice song, you say enco, but you wouldn't know what it meant. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. We will say enco, <laughs> meaning repeat. The music must repeat. Yeah. Uh, when I learned that it is actually, it is actually an Italian uh, in, uh, term, term for repeat. It was like wow. They never told us we were speaking Italian before even we went to school. Great. Let's check in, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. This is uh, uh, Commerza Radio Worldwide. The mind, the journey, the destiny. Apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. Our shows are based on the principle called the idea. We inform, entertain, develop, and educate, empower, and support, associate, and network. That's the idea. We are making an enco, as I said, a repeat to Gabi in German. I don't know in Afrikaans what you say it. Nochmal, uh, or is that right, Tivesh? <laughs> How do you say it in Afrikaans? How is your Afrikaans, Tivesh? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm trying to recollect uh, the challenges if we don't it's use it. Tell the silence. <laughs> yeah. Uh, noch, noch, noch a gans, noch a something. Uh, I'm not sure what the, the, the right word would be. And I'm sure Afrikaans is a very emotive language in that they mm -hmm. could have a, a saying that if you loosely mm -hmm. translate it back to English, it wouldn't make sense. But they're usually very emotive about things like this where you want to identify mm. a, a repeat of a, an event or something like that, Sam? Mm. Actually, I, I thought I was speaking Afrikaans. I was actually speaking English to you. Nochmal. That's German. Uh, I was no, saying Nochmal it in is, German. is Afrikaans. Nochmal, yeah. It it's, also, it's, also Afrikaans. It's, it's Afrikaans. Oh, cool. Welcome once again, on. Nochmal is once, once again. again. Yeah, okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so we are repeating uh, contract uh, number 21 under unit 26, sourcing of guests and proposal writing, because we did not have a good um, capture of the content last week. So it's a good opportunity to reflect a little bit more. But let me give you the opportunity to greet the listeners. I've greeted the listeners um, in a way of opening the show. My name is Sam Zima. I'm joined by Franz Ramutla. Call him uh, Marco. Uh, Franz, you need to tell people why we call you Marco. Then, of course, Divesh, Ramotilal, and Ompile is join us. I know our brother Rabula is not feeling well, and I know he's on the line listening from the public platform, suffering from, I don't know, there's flu or cold, whatever. And then, of course, hopefully others will join. Let me allow Divesh, Franz, and Ompile to greet our listeners and check in and let us know how you have been. Over to you, um, uh, Hunda Teramut. Uh, good evening, listeners. Good evening, uh, 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 colleagues. Uh, as Prasem said, I'm Franz Ramutla, uh, affectionately known as Mago. Uh, I derived the name of Mago from the times I was playing soccer for a church-based uh, club called Boyne United. And I used to play at the right flank and I used to bang in. I used to support the, the strikers there to bang in the, the, the goals. But Mago comes from my uh, Soto name, my baby name, Makolobe. Somebody from uh, primary decided to shorten it to Mago uh, based on how I was playing uh, soccer uh, at that time, and uh, it stood with me. So mm. today, uh, I spent part of my day um, researching some uh, information that is related to um, the manufacturing of uh, toilet VIP toilet trailers since I'm running that business. Uh, I was trying to understand the 
the trailer dimensions, the trailer specifications, so that uh, now I want to venture into manufacturing because I, I spent a lot of time on trailer refurbishment for, for, for Bitvest. Yeah, this is how I spent uh, the, uh, the most part of my day today. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Margo. We welcome you and uh, looking forward to your, to your participation. Yes. Evening, colleagues. Uh, evening to you, Sam, and evening to the listeners. Uh, Divesh Motilal, engineer by training, a graduate of the Digital Online Streaming Mastery Program, which Kometsa had developed through the COVID uh, period. Uh, my day today was long. Uh, didn't sleep much yesterday. Unfortunately, uh, there was some spiritual. Uh, event taking place in the church next door to me and somehow uh, the belief is that uh, the louder you are the closer you may get to God uh, that's the feeling I get but uh, the day as well went very well uh, still a bit surprising and maybe not so much that uh, especially in government sector they're still working in silos uh, to the point where for example uh, here comes uh, the roads agency, builds a road, and then here comes the sister company, uh, Job of Water, come and dig up the road and then put in the piping. Uh, something that we've been trying to fix and improve on for many, many years, but it still seems to want to rear its ugly head. We got a new mayor, or not so new, but uh, second time around uh, in Joburg. So uh, feeling a bit upbeat in hope, uh, together with our prayers that uh, the service delivery can improve in Joba. That's from me, Sam. Thank you. Mm. He has his ankle, no? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the city of Johannesburg, you know. Uh, yeah, we're all hopeful. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, when I mean, there's a contestations for these roles, leadership roles, uh, we as uh, citizens, at the end of the day, we, if change happens and it happens for the goodness of the citizens, especially for a big city like Johannesburg, we are happy. And, and then I think that's, that, that, that's very, what is most important. But yeah, we look forward to see what improvements it will bring. I think tomorrow they, they are looking at the speaker. So yeah, um, I don't know how I will I will react if I was uh, in that space as a political leader, but uh, I'm sure there are some there are some challenges there, especially now with the kind of uh, 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 results we've had after uh, elections. Uh, but at the local level, I think it's been up and down for a while. So yeah. Let's let's welcome Maynard. Maynard, welcome uh, uh, to the show, and then of course Umpile. Uh, any one of you? Uh, let's start with Umpile because you were first before Maynard. If you are able to, otherwise we are comfortable that you you continue listening as always from the distance. Uh, Umpile. Yes. Uh, greeting to everyone. Um, also, I would just greet everyone also and uh, just to also reflect on my day. I've uh, been reading a lot about Ntate uh, Mangope. I think he's been trending uh, this week. So I've been getting a lot of information about the whereabouts of how and how his party started and, uh, you know, it rise and fall of him. So. That's have been my highlight for, I think, this uh, beginning of the week. So I've learned a lot about how the Tswana people were actually identified and all the cultures, all the, the fights that happened. So that has been something that has been keeping me busy. And apart from that, it's just also looking at South African politics. What happened last week was some shocking news. So I've also been following uh, you know, the news of one of the EFF members who left. So I've been also looking at those uh, news as we all know what happened last week. 
Mm. So yeah. So is it is it is it international news? Uh, I mean, you, you up, update us from from outside. Is it is it is it uh, reported widely there in Europe? Uh yes, because I uh, obviously not too much, but uh, they 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 you know France, I think twenty four. Uh, also spoke about it. So it's something that is a bit, you know, trendy because we all know that, you know, the that party, I think it's number four. It's the biggest party in South Africa. Also, it has other branches in, like, other countries. So I think, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, commotion about what is happening and people are just worried about what is happening. Mm-hmm. But it's not that big, big, but, yeah, it was actually a bit of a, uh, uh, you know, a small trend. Mm. Yeah, we wouldn't say they are the biggest. I think they're number four now, but definitely quite a, an impactful political organization, and it's still it's still a topic. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting to hear that uh, places like Europe, uh, France, will will report on that. Uh, so it's good to know because we want to know that we do. We do matter out there as a as a country. I guess also a lot of a lot about Springbok's uh, success in 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 Australia, and of course, uh, uh, what is your homeboy uh, Divesh who won the WFC? Uh, Vikas is that Vikas Drikas? Drikas. Drikas Double C. But is your homeboy is from uh, your East East Rand side? <laughs> well, as your homeboy in as far as South Africa, but I thought he was from Pretoria, so uh, I should know better. Yeah, yeah, he, he's done very well, and uh, and the cricket as well is not bad, right? Anyway, so yeah, those are the the current developments. May not uh, over to you, and then we can go into the topic. Because we have listeners wanting to be insi- informed about uh, this topic. All right, thanks, Arisa. Um, uh, good evening, colleagues, and good evening to our listeners. Uh, well, I think you guys spoke a mouthful about what is trending at this point in moment. And yes, indeed, to me, it cast me in terms of the political space, the landscape, how is it shaping? as the comrade Tata Marero is reappointed the, the city. And uh, again, looking at the uh, co-founder and the deputy president of the uh, EFF departing and uh, sitting and thinking like the, the whole co-founder is, it, it, it is a, such an influential leader and uh, indeed. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking it means if a co-founder for 11 years, it means... Even mm-hmm. ourselves, my, my my company actually started with the EFF at the same time, you know. Um, my company is 11 years this time as well. So I've been going through with that political party at the same time. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, I put myself in, in his shoes that if myself, can I leave myself, my, uh, my company, how will people feel around me? I mean, I can imagine that pain that goes through mm-hmm. his other colleagues. So, but well, mm-hmm. it's one of those political landscapes. Um, otherwise, everything is okay. Myself, my I had a very busy day. Uh, it's actually very stressful. I had a lot of work to do and to catch up on other things and my car broke. So yeah, a lot happened as well. And yeah, a lot of stress is piled up on my side, but otherwise, nevertheless, the car has been sorted even though, you know, like it impact financially on something that you never planned for. But otherwise, otherwise my day has been a hectic day for me. Okay. I'm still to find a day when you don't have a stress, Maynard. It looks like it's your your trend. I hope you're coping with it. A number well, of times. You know, it, it, it's actually uh, a hectic for me because I don't have a lot of, um, I can say what, a lot of, employees that offload too much workload on my side. So I end up mm. juggling a lot of departments at my own. You know, I think maybe that is where the load is. And but otherwise I will find it's, a, it's your way of being. It's not necessarily like it's a surprise stress. It's just how it is, right? It's, it's, to me it ends up being a normal day, you know, my normal day today. And I'm always thinking that I used to tell my wife that sometimes if I can hire somebody to do a certain thing they end up complaining that it's too much work for them. 
and I'm thinking well, to me, I do all those things myself. Mm-hmm. Like all the departments, I manage them myself. But one person to manage one department becomes too much for them. But I'm well, just wanting you to be conscious of the of the language you deposit into the universe, because. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes we tend to, to we say it uh, meanwhile actually you're coping with it so it's positive it's not really that bad yeah well I'm coping I really can't complain much you know really I can't complain much <laughs> okay I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it there man I, I tried in a subtle way to say to say positive things into the universe about your business that will help <laughs> well, lovely <laughs> Thank you so much, colleagues. Yeah, let's get let's get onto the this uh, challenge of sourcing and uh, streaming show guests and then proposal writing. I think uh, because we touched on it last time, but for the benefit of the listeners, we did touch a lot around the number of sources that can be used, starting with uh, social media, and then we spoke about the the guests or speaker agents, which is quite the an interesting phenomena that uh, is there and is a big business. And of course, we we mentioned the fact that uh, maybe at the universities, there's still public libraries that uh, will have uh, publications around people who publish journals and, 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 and write good papers. And of course, we spoke about networking uh, uh, as one of the ways of uh, finding the the guests that you can invite to a show. And then a professional associations is another way of looking at it. If you belong to professional associations, uh, you're likely to come across people there, and it's actually their business to connect their members. We spoke about the word of mouth, which for me is my best word of mouth. Your listeners are the ambassadors of your of yourself, and they say the word out there, and that way people get recommended to you. And then, of course, public profiles, platforms. Let's let's, let's re- reflect a little bit on that. If any one of you can pick one, maybe someone pick, pick up social media, please, and then let someone pick up the speaker agents, someone pick uh, public libraries from university perspective, networking, and then professional associations. Just, just to put it in the context, because it's, it's one thing to talk about those as sources, but it's another thing to look deeper into it in terms of how you can go about cultivating the networks and you know, the connections from those, because you 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 have to understand those those sources, not just listing them. So that's the whole idea. And if you are streaming, and and streaming is your real big business, you better make sure that you know which of those are really the places where you can go and look for great guests for your shows. Uh, yeah. We want to take social media, and I mean, we can spend a while on the social media one. I like it as well. Divesh? Yes, um, uh, I wanted to reflect on the social media aspect. Uh, I, of course, had a, a a show focusing on leadership, and I found that uh, platforms such as LinkedIn was very appropriate for being able to firstly identify potential guests that you could have uh, on 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 my show, which was focusing on leadership, LinkedIn is indeed a more professional orientated uh, platform. Uh, social media people do post, um, you know, relevant information about certain sectors, certain professions they may be in. Uh, they've got their their professional profiles outlined, so it does assist with being able to bring the type of guests that I was interested in. And of course, within the guest profile itself, it did allow you to also do your first sort of uh, stab at uh, doing research about your guest, what they stand for, and of course, allows you then to contact them and then take it forward in terms of uh, engaging further and seeing whether there's a, a perfect fit for the intention that you have in, in your show that you want to deliver, Sam.
just noticed that, for instance, Instagram has now launched a, what they call it's called Thread. Have you seen it? Yes, I have, uh, and uh, it's sort of mimicking as well as uh, providing innovation for other th- um, aspects that other social media platforms are offering. And yeah. uh, even even if the likes of uh, Facebook is also f- following suit to have yeah. this tw- Twitter-like uh, approach, yeah. I think it's yeah. because of how X. Uh, you know, Twitter transformed into X and a lot of the subscribers left the platform. It left mm. opportunity for others to come on board as well, sir. Yeah. But it's also it's also driven by the success of I don't know whether you know Cora. It's Cora. You know Cora. Which is a threat type of a social media platform. I think it starts with the word Q. It's a it's where you can put a threat and it's amazing how other people then comment and, and through the engagement, it goes viral if the topic is good. Yes, I'm familiar with it. And I found it more inclined towards uh, some kind of educational question or research, yeah. research alignment, yeah. Which, yeah. which you want peer group is that to the respond. Quora is spelled Q-U-O-R-A. Yes. They say that uh, Cora is a, is a place um, uh, just to, to respond to, I mean, the point you've just raised, Divesh, um is a place to share knowledge and better understand the world. That's how they position the... the but it's very interesting that uh, they, from Cora, you could also still share with the other platforms. So I think that that's a platform where you can also source a lot of subject matter experts. So the, the social media is evolving and it will continue to evolve, but you can see that there's a consolidation here so that is, is existing big players actually bringing more diverse or more innovation in terms of how to continue engaging the, 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 the people. So that's a, that's a good source. The speaker agents, uh, we spoke about if you are in podcast, you will probably know of a number of agents that whose work is nothing else but to look for guests for the at clients. So if, if you run a podcast, they'll come to you to say that we, we like your podcast. Uh, we would like to source uh, guests for you, uh, for your show. Uh, and for you as a host, it costs you nothing because they normally will have a contract with subject matter experts who are looking for platforms that they can be hosted at and and and, and share with the audience of that platform. So I find it quite uh, it's quite very helpful. However, it can be overwhelming. I think last time I mentioned that it can be very overwhelming because when you subscribe to those platforms in a day you'll get uh, 20 requests and now you struggle to once they become too many you you don't know whether it's worth it because it's another work for you to do but but certainly you can approach those agents and tell them the type of uh, guests you want to invite and then they will tell you whether they have those guests or not, or they just find you because they go on the platform, they find you. And if you are, it's clear in terms of what show topics you are, you are pushing forward, then they will, they will deliver those people to you. And especially if you want to reach the global, global network, there are a couple of friends I've met through that. But I think, as I said, the challenge was uh, sometimes you then are not able to service it, but that's a challenge of all the platforms and all that. But the speaker agents, if you are big into really disseminating knowledge and information through your streaming channel, it's it's the way to go by because those people, they are working for experts out there who want to be known. So that's another source. I hope next year when we start going back to where you guys and other people host shows, we can really start exploring that because I think it's a very powerful way to connect with these agents are very good. They are real researchers. Yeah. 
who wants to touch on public libraries who has last been to universities. I recently was at the Johannesburg, at the University of Johannesburg, during Fonden campus, and uh, I went past their library. I was like, oh, I was reminded that don't think because you are not full-time on campus, libraries are no longer existing. They are existing and they are actually more also technology-driven. So, so it's not a library in the olden tradition. The old tradition is that the library in the sense that that's the place to go and sit and research and technology is being brought in there. And I think uh, those are very close to universities. You'll agree with me that uh, even at the universities, even though you use technology, you might have challenges of accessing technology. And therefore, libraries are, in a way, a meeting place where you can still use technology, but it's a quieter space. So I don't know whether they have changed the setups. I'm sure you could even have meeting rooms or corners where you can do your work in a quieter place. So so we must not discount public libraries or university libraries as places where you can find serious speak, serious guests, especially those who write for journals, those who publish articles, though even the books, the authors as well. And this this will be mostly functional type of topics, a specialist kind of topics. And uh, Authors like it when they are found through their books. Somebody did say that uh, a book is a business card of an of an author. Why? Wow. Quite very interesting. Basically, they are saying once you write a book, your book can become your business card if you you it's well positioned within reach of those who want to find you. So that's public libraries. Let, let's talk about networking, Dimesh. I, and I, I, to come in. Yeah. I just wanted to add something in relation to libraries. Uh, one of the areas of, of innovation or evolution with regards to your traditional public library has been the aspect of adding in incubators, uh, some kind of innovation hubs, and they've grown into areas where SMMEs often would find uh, some uh, home advantage in terms of being able to grow their ideas into their businesses and the like. And also you could get support from those hubs. So mm -hmm. my other perspective would be that in those libraries with those kinds of uh, you know, evolutions, you could find the type of guest in terms of an SMME from a specific uh, setting, maybe a rural environment, maybe a township environment, which could give you expert, you know, expert uh, perspective, uh, expert experience that could then form into being a very interesting guest for yourself, sir. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Umpile? Uh, yes, thank you, Ntadesem. Yeah, I, I, I also agree with uh, Mr. Devesh in terms of uh, like the library, how it can be used, you know, to source some of the, maybe like uh, the guest of, of, of the podcast. But for me, uh, from my experience, especially with the University of Johannesburg, uh, I've, I've actually met a lot of, you know, I've, I've met a lot of people through, uh, you know, the, the network session or talks that they normally would host at the library and uh, normally they would host a lot of prominent people. Uh, sometimes they can sometimes bring ministers, sometimes former presidents, you know, and maybe sometimes other, you know, social uh, people, uh, like social activists. And like you said, also uh, some people who write books, authors, they would normally come and discuss, you know, a lot of different uh, topics. So I know even right now as an alumni of the University of Johannesburg, uh, there are some sessions that they normally have. And with, with uh, you know, the advancement of technology, I'm able to join also, you know, digitally and also participate in, in such a session, depending on maybe what topic interests me. So... Uh, I feel like uh, universities, uh, it, it's, uh, universities, is particularly, I think, the one at the University of Johannesburg, I think even the University of the Northwest, uh, which I, I know them very well. So 
they normally make this uh, platform or this networking session available to the public and there you can you can get a lot of uh, big knowledge. I know a lot of people from the Pan-African uh, Parliament that used to come and speak uh, like prominent people from the from the Pan-African Parliament. They would come talk and also different ministers uh, in terms of different you know sections so whatever interests you you can even now i think it's all even open now to everyone who wants to if you just go on the website the uj uh, website you can get some information and then if you want to source someone directly to a particular industry or or something you can we can follow those events and subscribe yeah thank mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. Mm. So you are basically saying that the library is also a meeting place because you meet researchers there, you meet the authors there, and there are events that they, they organize uh, where the guest speakers talk uh, in the name of the library. Am I right? Yes, yes, definitely. And you, you get people who are well experienced in maybe particular, you know, in like uh, topics or, you know, departments or domains or disciplines. So you can get more of like practical experience from people who have been in maybe industry or people who have authored books who probably know more about that particular topic that, uh, you know, is going to be discussed. Yes, definitely. Mm. Mm. What about book launches and that there are Mutla? That could also be a great source of speakers because I, I see exclusive books is, is known for whenever new books are launched, are written and made available to be sold, they will put together an event and invite people to come and listen to the to the to the author. And and it's amazing the the, the intelligentsia that well I'm, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, not necessarily intelligentsia, but people who are interested in books. I mean that's how I bought, I I met Professor uh, G, uh, Johnson. The former vice chancellor of University of uh, of the Free State. In fact, he was launched. Was he launching, or no, I think he was invited to comment on somebody else's book launch. But it could have been his book launch as well. And it was such an amazing engagement that we had. And and I think West University as well does a lot of book launches. Uh, I always get those invites and a very interesting uh, type of books that that people author out there and the universities are doing quite a lot. In fact, they have a culture of community outreach, most of these universities and like companies will do, they, they take they have this practice of say, but we need to be engaging the communities around which our campuses are. And one of those things is to invite non-university non, non community people, like working professionals to attend events like book launches or even just seminars and conferences? Uh, yes, just to add also, I, I, I agree with you on that, that is, and because I also once attended one book launch, I think it was for DJ's Boo, I think Hustlers, I think uh, he was launching a book and the environment there was very, uh, like, because the nice thing about this book launch is that they, they allow the, the people to also like, you know, engage in what they feel like and you get a lot of knowledge from attending uh those 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 events, especially if it's for a particular topic that interests you the most. So you can contribute and also also absorb uh, absorb a lot of knowledge from, from those type of events and also get good networks. Yeah, I think absolutely uh, I think I want, yes, the drum. Support, I want to support uh, what uh, is that Umpile who just spoke now? Yes. I want to support what you have said because uh, we had a wonderful experience uh, when we attended uh, Brasem's uh, launch. Uh, the way the session was led was for uh, a number of um, chapters that were some chapters that were identified through which Prasem was expected to um, to um, to ex expand and to share with the audience. 
And um, I liked the fact that uh, all of us as the audience, yes, we were also given the opportunity to, pass it, to participate. And it was a, a very vibrant uh, occasion. Prasem, yeah. uh, let me, or maybe let me pause here before I comment on the professional associations. Maybe you want to say something before. Yes, I, I think you can carry on in that, Teramutla, because you are the most appropriate person. And you and I, we met through professional associations. And uh, I think it made people also a little bit of a context to people uh, because your professional association, which is no longer there, was one of the most uh, historical associations in the 80s in this country. So many people don't know that you you play the key role in in that professional association, which you are still part of it in, in terms of you being the product of the profession. Maybe take it over from there. I mean, if it wasn't that the two professional associations, you and I we wouldn't be here today. I mean, as, as friends. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, let me take this opportunity to say I, I had the honor of being... Um, elected the, the president of the South African Black Social Workers Association. And when it transitioned into the National Association of Social Workers in South Africa, I also had the opportunity to be elected as the president. And therefore, one of the two things, the two um, activities that uh, characterized our movements was the, when we uh, organized the conferences. And this is where I had a, a, an, an opportunity to, to drive the process of sourcing guests for our, for our conferences. It starts with the, uh, the topic for the year. Normally, our topics were uh, informed by the socioeconomic uh, issues in our country. Uh, for example, when uh, there was a, the new era, we had then to talk around the role of social work in development. And this is where then Brasem was one of our guests in our conference in 2001. So when you look at the sourcing the guests, you have to look at the, 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 the profile of the guest, the, the knowledge, the relevant of the guests. Uh, in as far as the topic is concerned, and also um, the availability of the guest. So yeah, we 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 used to 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 look at those issues when we we were going to source our guests. But mm. one uh, when I was working at uh, social development, one event that we celebrated each year was the social work month, mm. and. Uh, um, we, with, with relevance to uh, what we are doing today, in during the era of COVID, you know, there was no face-to-face -face, uh, 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 events, and therefore we had to meet through um, we had to meet through teams. Uh, there still we had to source the, the we had to source uh, the, the guests by looking at the, the knowledge relating the topic with the knowledge of the, the guest and also uh, yeah, arranging how we are going to, uh, to, uh, to, to arrange our audience uh, during that team's meeting. Yeah, mm. yeah, I think I can go so far. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you know, uh, uh, today, and since then, I became the friends of the social work movement, and I understood so much about social work. And many of my friends through that network, we, we stayed in contact. We see, we see so and them, when that the Mandis, Vivian, Mantate, Sarah Mantate, the, the list goes on and on. So, so I think I think in the Dramutla and others maybe can come in here. I think professional bodies are the most impactful and the most reliable. As you know, I, I, I was at that time also part of the Black Management Forum, and and the investment is is just for life. So, 
depending on the profession where you are, uh, uh, Maynard and Umpile, absolutely long term, you can always benefit by associating with the association of your profession. Of course, sometimes it can be too much. You can't be joining too many professional bodies. But one professional body must always be identified because there you literally have access to the members of that professional body for free. And everybody respects you because you belong to the same profession. Like I belong to the professional profession of the human resources and management. So so I think I think for me, why these sources are important, for now it's not it might not look critical because you have access. But if you are to engage a, a researcher or what people call the producer for your show or for your streaming, they're gonna get they're gonna have to get the guidance from you from a strategic point of view as to which sources they must spend the little monies that you might have in finding finding guests. And that's why it's very the value in us spending time on this on these various sources because it can be very expensive to research for guests every week. May not? Yes, Ma. Uh, thanks, Narisem. Indeed, uh, the professional bodies, they do help you in terms of getting the, the right and relevant uh, guests. And uh, as, as, as uh, Dr. Ramuda, Dr. Ramuda ne, said, yes. like in terms of uh, his experience in, the, in terms of the professional uh, body of the social workers, and my, I associated myself as well in terms of the association that I'm in or that I was uh, a leader of, like as a South African Events Management Associations that I led for almost uh, two decades as a deputy uh, chairperson and then the, the chairperson later on. So indeed, you get to, to get to experience uh, different guests because when there are events, you are the one that is responsible to get the relevant uh, speakers for such events. And it's quite an interesting journey to, 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 to get interacting with such people that you know that are very uh, potential people in that space and it, it gives you that uh, exposure and and the knowledge as well because you end up learning a lot as well from such people and i, I believe uh it's just like the last year i was not too active in terms of the shows but i think i, I should have managed to source one or two uh, uh guests on, on on in terms of the event space but i believe coming next year we should have potential uh, guests on that space but Yes, I'm looking forward for that as well. And and when you engage your professional body, you are actually edifying them in terms of the value and the service and the offerings that they are making to their to their members. So there will be synergy there and they will be very willing to support you because you make them feel important by coming to them for for references to one some of their members. So yeah, that's a very important Important thing. And, and, and again, when the professional bodies like that Ramutla was saying, organize these annual events, that's where net, your networking skills also come in. Yeah. So, so you are networking within a professional body event. You don't have to worry about the people in terms of the ethics or, the, or what they stand for. The, you, there's all, you're only a common group, but then you still have to drill down to make sure that you then maximize the network and you cultivate that relationship. And in and, and, and that way, you, you can have both networking, networking and professional sourcing as one strategy of sourcing guests. Of course, you may want different perspective out from outside your profession. Therefore, your professional body then might not be necessarily the one to source for. That's where now you identify other professional bodies where you are wanting to get this subject matter experts. And there you are being intentional. For instance, if you are looking for, uh, if you are looking for a strategy person or you are looking for accountant, you'll go for professional bodies for those professions. So it's a very quick way of actually getting to your objective without necessarily spending time searching in the open market. Anyway, word of mouth. That's also one area that uh, we we need to not underestimate. If you intentionally inform your listeners that, listen, next week I would like to be talking about this topic. As listeners, you belong to various uh, uh, formations out there. 
this is the topic I'm going to talk about. Please share the message with other people. Now, today, word of mouth is being edified by the technology. I still remember the, the, the first word of mouth organization. I think it was established in New York. It was just a word of mouth. You belong to it. The technology was not yet in, but now the word of mouth is like it has its own technology to drive that the word of mouth is no longer just the word of mouth. It's also intertwined with the with the other platforms. One of the powerful organizations uh, uh, that was all, always along those lines, they, I think they're called the Business Network International, BNI. BNI is one of the oldest business networking organizations that you, do, you can't join it unless you are invited by an existing member of the chapter where this, the, the you want to join. And what is also very interesting is if, for instance, you are a diversion, you say, I'm joining this BNI because uh, I'm doing business in the engineering space. They will not welcome you if there's only a member who is an engineer in the engineering field, but they will refer you to another uh, BNI chapter somewhere that does not have a person like yourself. So, so from that BNI word of mouth, it is also now being driven by technology. So, so a lot of lot of organizations started through the word of mouth, and they evolved. So, so and that's why you hear people. People hire specialists, they call them business ambassadors, which which are basically the people that are speaking on behalf of you in the, in high places. So 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 if you are to really establish yourself where you even employ a researcher, keep in mind that uh, you are going to have to be very strategic about the sourcing. It's not just uh, something that you take very lightly because you can bend resources with achieving very little if you are not strategic about it. And then, of course, we spoke about public profiles. This is where also within the professional bodies, they do put together profile publications of their members according to categories that they are functioning in. But there are bodies also whose job is nothing else but produce the who is who in the zoo, if I may use that uh, say. Uh, uh, we did talk about... Uh, uh, um, uh, what is the, the Dalitambo Dalitambo's famous old program that is no longer there, he used to call it the people of the south his, his intention was to showcase the people of the south the people of South Africa and, and, and their uniqueness to the rest of the world and it used to be such fascinating show I would always just want to see who is Dali going to be showcasing next next week in the show. And it is really, really incredible. It was really incredible. And and so, yeah, there's similar people, similar type of platforms like those. I mean, if you take a JJ Tavan's show, you always look forward to see who is JJ Tavan going to be hosting. So those kind of magazines programs, they are very, very helpful. And now with LinkedIn, you see somebody on JJ Tavan, the next thing you go to LinkedIn, and then you click, you find that person, and then you write to that person to say, I saw you on JJ's show. Will it be interesting to continue the discussion with our platform, which has got different kind of profile of listeners? People are always looking forward to that. So yeah, I, th I, think, I, think, I think for me, if we are active, we are wide awake and fully present with ourselves around the professions that we do, things can become easy. And and I guess this is what we are trying to highlight here. It's, it sounds very easy. It is not easy, but if you are strategic, you can really attract very powerful, high-profile guests to your show. I hope I hope that this helps before we transition into the. Now that you have identified these uh, guests, how do you approach them? Now, it could be about writing a proposal, or it could be calling a person to make a proposal. The principle is still the same. Let's hold it here and, and, and check if you don't have some reflections before we move away from uh, this part A and go to part B, where we look at proposal writing. Divesh? 
Yes, uh, Sam. Uh, from my side, I uh, I give uh, uh, kudos to all the various uh, different maze and methods that we could use to uh, source our uh, potential guests. But my suggestion, as well, is when you're doing research, don't need, you don't need to restrict yourself to just one method. And it doesn't mean that you must con just consistently use the same method all the time. You can have a mix of those uh, suggestions. Sam. Absolutely. And that's why I, th I think for, for some people, you hear always producers or researchers of shows, they specialize on that. And they will tell you there's no, there's no source they are not connected with. So, so for us, we will be talking as the people who are the hosts and the anchors. But if you are to want to, if you are listening out there and you are looking for a great job or a great profession, it is that of researching guest speakers. And you can go beyond the country into the rest of the world if you really position yourself very well. Yes, indeed, Divesh, then you are going to have to be very multifaceted because you could be one researcher servicing four or five uh, anchors in four or five shows. Uh, therefore, you will need to be very multifaceted in terms of where do you source the guests because you want to demonstrate to your clients who are the show hosts and the streamers that you can really indeed find clients easily. Thanks thanks for that, uh, Divesh. Uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, that I just wanted to edify that fact to say that uh, it is a profession and it is a very valuable profession. The more you add to the potential sources, the more you become attractive to those who want to use your services. I certainly will want to get to a point where I don't worry about the guests and I just I just prepare myself for the show. But then, of course, the researcher will have to brief me uh, before the show so that uh, I don't uh, misstep in the engagement. But but as I say. We have to build the capacity around as colleagues, as anchors and hosts and uh, and moderators because we, our specialization is the ability to hold the conversations. But if you don't have somebody looking for best guests for you, you're going to lose listeners. Great. Let's move on to now that you have identified the the guest, it's very important that you know how to make a proposal. I will even say, let me put proposal writing aside and just talk about talk about proposal. You have identified me, you have a show and you have a platform and you think that uh, I'm the subject matter expert that could excite and educate and empower your, your listeners. Now, I don't know that you know that and, 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 and you approach me. Let, let, let's talk about that before we go into the details. What is, what, what is the function why, why is it so important to think seriously about how you're going to approach the potential guests? Mpile? Anyone? You find something attractive, you want to get it. What is the first thing to be concerned about as you do that? We call it WIFM, W-I-F-M. You know what that means? What is it in it for them? Or what is it, what is in it for me? Is there a value proposition for me to say yes. Have you thought about it or are you just taking chances? What are you selling to me? Why me? When you are hosting the annual conferences, of uh, of uh, of Sabswa then, and the latest the the other one, the sub the successor to it, we're sitting in your meeting, in your board meeting with your colleagues, and 
did you have a, did you have to worry about what if they ask what is the value for me what will you say is the value for them the value my my value for them or my value for the association yeah the, the value for them why should they accept your proposal to become the guest speaker at your conference will you well, how do well, you like packaging that for them I was supposed to ask you that question because I asked you to come and be a guest speaker at our conferences on several occasions. <laughs> yeah, well, you must remember at that time I was a young, young, upcoming uh, professional and uh, I wanted to be known. And maybe yeah, somebody cool. the opportunity to, to showcase what I can, what I know. Uh, but Brasam, uh, don't forget that your, your your last presentation, where I was the president at the presidential dinner, was in Durban in 2011. So it's not a long time ago. You were matured then. Why did you come? Why did you want us to accept your proposal to come? And, and at that time, I was already uh, at that time I was already a friend of Sapswa, and you had already issued me a certificate of acknowledgement. Remember. So I yes. wouldn't say no, uh, because as Sapsa was now, then I was a friend. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, okay, in, res in response to your answer, isn't it that it was me who was inviting the the guests and uh, I was leading yes. the, the the process of accepting a proposal for the guests that we are to get to invite? And, but uh, when you send I, people to go, when you send people to go and look for guests, what did you put as a package uh, or incentive for those guests not to say no? No, what what we put uh, uh, as a package in more often than not we we related the 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 topic with the core business of uh, the the guest speaker, the role mm -hmm. uh, the value adding role of the. The, the organization or the company in the social development agenda. So that's a big question to answer in when you're doing a proposal to somebody. It's not just about you. Most of times we're just thinking about us. We're not thinking about that person. Why will that person come and help us meet our expectations of our guests that we are inviting, right? Yes. So that's why yes. I'm, I'm saying uh, there is a there is a mutual value for both for 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 the association and for the community and for that company because mm -hmm. you know most of the companies or the organizations are involved in social responsibility so mm -hmm. uh, the value to that person or to the organization of course is part of exposing that organization to the guests that uh, shall have been attending. Remember, the guests include also members of the community. So you agree that uh, actually if you use the win-win mentality or mindset in requesting people to be part of your of your show, you are actually you you are actually likely to be successful. Yes, you are the same happens with networking. If you if you are invent, invited to a show, it's because the people or to a networking event, it's because the people that invite you, they see you as somebody who add, will add value to others who come there. But you also, they also see you appreciating that opportunity to meet other people. So 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 one of the important things in networking is. And I'm sorry now I'm I'm like lecturing, but I'm just saying when you do the proposal is think about that other person, what they will gain and what you will offer them and position it in such a way that they see value for themselves as well. And and uh, you must have been in a networking situation where people run from one corner to another. They don't even have time to engage with you because they want to see, meet as many people as possible. And then the first thing in the morning when they're back in their office, they write to those people and tell those people how much they, what they can do for them. That's not really networking. So in, in getting speakers, you're going to have to build relationship, however short uh, you will take to come to a point 
of actually being 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 friends with the people but but the first thing is to address people's uh, uh, sometimes even unannounced undeclared interests or you have to create that interest for them to want to be part of you so that is really one aspect of proposal and i think it answered the question of why a proposal is so important when you want to win people over to your show Have we answered the, the question of, that's one way of looking at it. I don't know whether you have other reasons of other things or in terms of your understanding of proposals on Pile. Um, yes, that the same. Uh, sometimes I see with uh, some of the shows that we have, like some of the, 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 the shows that we have, like maybe podcasts that we have. So they are value proposition would be maybe for example if they have a lot of reach to a lot of people so for example let's say uh if we go to you know the mcg's uh for example uh, podcast if maybe i'm i'm a maybe i'm an artist and uh, i'm releasing a song so i can you know i can i can i you know the value would be uh, I would go maybe talk about maybe some maybe topics about how to be an artist, maybe you know starting artist for the show that would be maybe the value for the show or whatever that they, what is interesting, what they want or what the hoster would want to ask. But as for me, uh, I would be going in you know to get maybe reach of audience, for example, uh, to mm -hmm. say that I'm going to get a bit of reach to some people. So sometimes uh, when when you are invited, it, it could be maybe to uh, maybe put out your brand or put out mm -hmm. your you know marketing type of uh, tactics. Sometimes it can be that way. And at the same time also, you know, like you said, a mutual beneficial uh, kind of uh, in a way, Please. yeah, organization, yeah. Mm. That that brings us to the point that talks about uh, doing needs analysis. Of you have your own needs, but do you know the needs of the people you want to avoid a point? So if you understand their needs, it's very easy to meet each other halfway. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so that if it's a show, you remember earlier on, colleagues, uh, Maynard, uh, when we were running the show, we had a template where we will explain the the we will we'll introduce the platform, we'll then introduce the show and the objectives of the show, and then we will introduce the person who's the host of the show. In many cases, the host is the person who has actually identified the guest because we didn't have researchers. But we will connect the guests with the host to say, Divesh has actually highly recommended you to be the guest to this show. But we are also lucky in the sense that Divesh himself will be the host and will be the person who will be holding conversation with you. So there's only emotional connection there. And we know that this person has got a relationship with Divesh and he will want to to honor Divesh because he valued the friendship with Divesh. But the template was there, and that is also the next step. So it's not enough to have the purpose and the needs analyzed, but you have a template that is a standard that you use to tweak every now and then so that you don't uh, waffle a lot and uh, have to miss the, miss the objectives of, of, of getting the guest. So that, that is really one of the points we are highlighting here. And, 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 and from that template, you, you, you basically also have the outline of your show. Divesh always says that uh, one key success factor of any show is planning. So the planning itself already speaks to the template of your show. So you, you, we will always say, this is how the show is going to run. It's a, it's a one hour show or two hour show. We'll start, we will give you the opportunity to say a bit about yourself, your company, 
We'll engage with you, and then at the end, we will give you the opportunity to to market yourself in terms of how people find you. That already on its own, when you share it with uh, with with the guest, is you are already saying to them that you are acknowledging that they do they too have a business or have an interest, and therefore you are meeting their interest because at the end, you'll give them the opportunity to say to people, "This is where you find me," and we will even say. At the end, we will give you we will give you a link to the podcast that you can actually share with your network. So, so you almost like anticipate uh, because if you don't, you could actually be self saving, and the guest can actually see that you're just interested in your in yourself and not them. Am I am I addressing the real issues, concerns, uh, Maynard and Divash based on the experience from 2020 up to so far? Yes, um, I do believe you got to have a unified messaging from the platform, from the co-host uh, over to the guest. And indeed, the guest has to have a vested interest, have the show that will benefit him uh, personally, over and above him sharing his professional expertise, uh, his involvement in that sector, uh, and having interest in being able to share his stories with the guests, uh, he still needs to have some value proposition. And indeed, the proposals that we're talking about is about articulating that value proposition. And the manner in which we do that will also articulate our level of professionalism and the opportunity of actually realizing that value that we bring across to him, Sam. Mm. Very much so. Very much so. There's also a challenge of um, how you um, you then uh, 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 develop the skills of writing, and I think uh, this is also another specialist area in the communication space. If we are to look at the uh, streaming and the uh, podcast and radio, online radio as communication, as as communication as elements in the communication industry, we we often communicate in in English and English is not everybody's mother language. However, when you are writing out this proposal to to the market out there, uh, the assumption is that if you are using English, you better master it or you better write be good at professional English or professional business English writing. And this is where sometimes also we we tend to make a very wrong assumptions that just because you know how to to write in English, it does not necessarily mean that your English is a business English language for the particular purpose that you are writing about. And this is where pro, specialists uh, proposal writers come in. It will be a different story if you are writing a short story that is going to be read in a show. But if you are writing a proposal for somebody uh, who, is considered, who is a professional speaker, they will want you to also use the language that's identified with, 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 with your platform. And it's for that reason why in those uh, earlier times, we almost had this standard way of introducing the platform and the program. But then what we require from you, and this is what your producers will require from you or your researchers will require from you, is the meat of it. In other words, the real message, the content. Uh, theirs is to put it in a way that is uh, is, is receptive, but yours is as a subject matter expert to give them the content. And, and there need to be collaboration there between you and whoever is supporting you as your researcher. Sometimes we find ourselves uh, debating on things that are, we shouldn't be debating. You shouldn't be debating about the business language construction if you are not expert in that. But you should be checking whether the content, you, the message you want to send is covered enough. And the subject matter expert with which the researchers are should then put it in a language that is actually acceptable as a professional language. So there's a writing skills 
but there is also content mastery and then there is actually the packaging of the proposal. That's where then marketing comes in. Is this according to the branding of the show, the branding of the organization and, uh, and the acceptable way of branding it? People will never complain, but they will always make remarks about it. And we should be making an effort to, to get to a point where whatever communication goes out of your show's office represent what you stand for as a brand. Divash the brand, the program, the brand of the program and the, pro the brand of the platform. I mean, if you go into a number of the platforms, you can see uh, those who have taken an effort to make sure that uh, they are, their promotion of their shows represent what they are stand for. You, you can see the, the, the difference. And, 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 and again, as we have always said, that your show is your enterprise. And therefore, it has to have an identity of its own over and above the quality standards that it meets in terms of delivering the information. But the packaging has to be also appealing to people. And that's why it doesn't matter how nice it looks and how good it looks and how good the content is. You still need professional proofreading of your communication before it leaves your office. Because once it's gone, it's either building your image or destroying it. So, so, so those of you will then will have the opportunity to have people working for you. You still have a responsibility to check what leaves your office before it leaves. And those who support you, they must know that you must still have to check it and be happy with it. They can advise you from their specialist point of view, but you must make sure that you can actually associate with it because at the end of the day, when the show starts, you are building on what people have been seeing in anticipation of your show. Proofreading and editing is definitely the last step of packaging your proposal. Now I'm talking the proposals where you are actually doing the written proposal. It could be a, a proposal through audio as well. That's still the case. You still have to check if it is the right one. What about where you speak to people? I mean, there, unfortunately, if you're going to do proposal through telephone and those, you better be comfortable that uh, you'll come across as convincing and as professional as is expected by whoever you are talking to. There, the risk is once it's done, it's gone. If the damage is done, the damage is done. And that's why approaching professional guest speakers is a professional job itself. It must be done by professional people. If you don't have them in your office, you have to outsource it. Or if you have the knowledge, then you better be confident that you, you, you cross all the T's and dot at all the I's. Yeah, so those those are some of the the the, the things we need to be aware of. Um, what else can we bring in? Um, yeah, so basically, uh, proposal writing is also an area of specialization in the tendering space. Divesh, uh, many organizations invest massively in their sourcing of business uh, departments because. They have seen these opportunities being lost simply just because the people who are approaching the potential clients are not really specialists, are not really professional, and therefore is still part of the value proposition. Actually, most costs of sales are associated with that. Dinesh? Yes, just on your point of, uh, you know, having a, a verbal proposal as well as so as opposed to a written proposal. I would also say that uh, if you've got a relationship as a host with the potential guest, you do a verbal one and then say that they should be on a lookout for the written communication. It just adds to that level of professionalism. If you actually do a hybrid where they don't just get the written one out of the blue, they would actually get a heads up from a verbal perspective in terms of the proposal that would be coming their way. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, wow, that's a very good point, uh, Divesh, you, uh, you are raising there. 
you you give them heads up you can and in that way mistakes can be done but you know that it will be rectified by the it will be rectified by the by the formal approach right indeed sir. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, let's 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 look at uh, wrapping up and uh, reflecting, and of course checking out uh, if there are no any other additional input. But yeah, I'm, I think we have uh, I think we have uh, uh, emphasized on quite important, uh, valuable pointers here. Who wants to reflect, uh, tell us, share with us the takeaways and... Uh... Yes, Tibesh. Thank you, Sam. Uh, from my side, takeaway uh, or reiteration of uh, some of the points we've raised tonight, uh, there's various uh, avenues in terms of being able to source your guests. Mm. Uh, my personal preference is the social media platforms, uh, as well as uh, it depends on uh, what kind of a show you're having, what kinds of guests you're looking for. Uh, I'm more in the professional uh, space. So a platform such as LinkedIn would be best suited for myself. Uh, in terms of doing the proposal, um, it's, always, it's always good that you get your central office or your resourced units within your organization to assist and make sure there's consistency in terms of the type of proposals that get generated. And then it should align with your personal brand, the brand of the show, as well as uh, what value propositions are in for the guest itself. Thank you, sir. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks, uh, thanks, Divesh, and yeah, thanks for your reflection. Dadramut. Thank you, uh, Prasem. Uh, my take home tonight is that uh, um, The host and co-host link to Visual Studios. Uh, it doesn't um, uh, only apply to the online uh, industry. We, we can mm. also link this with uh, the face-to-face -face, uh, engagements. As I've mm. indicated, that uh, when we we sourcing our guest for for the Visual Studios is similar to when we're sourcing our guests, when we do it on a face-to-face, -face, either workshops or conferences. And um, to a certain extent now, uh, with, the, with the introduction of uh, the, the teams as a means of communication, uh, we also had then the opportunity during the COVID uh, time to engage uh, using the teams. So in mm. other ways, uh, sourcing the guests for visual studios and sourcing the guests for face-to-face, -face, for us, uh, they are interrelated. They support each other. Yes, mm. thank you, Prasen. Beautiful. Thanks for the perspective, uh, Dadara Mutla. Um, Umpile, your reflection and checking out takeaways? Uh, yes, thank you, Dr. Sam. Uh, from my side, I I would reflect in terms of uh, the impact and the power of uh, library and public, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or organization or public library for sourcing some of the people that you would want to host as a hoster. And also, yeah, I, I also want to take out the part of uh, how do you, navigate through the social media to uh, try and attract uh, some of the, the speakers or some of the guests that you would want to get. Because 
Uh, there are so many social medias, like mentioned, we have LinkedIn, I think Facebook also, last week we spoke about it, that it's also very important and a lot of people, uh, you know, young and old, uh, you can find everyone on Facebook most of the time. It has a lot of uh, uh, users that, uh, you know, people underestimate it. And yeah, and also YouTube, I feel like we, we didn't edit a lot. Um, talks, I mean, we didn't talk about it a lot, but it does have a lot of, impact in a lot of people's life and it, we can we can source a lot of people from from linkedin i mean from youtube so in general uh yeah i i, I got to get the juice of you know the the idea in terms of when you are hosting where where do you go in terms of getting the relevant and you know i mean the relevant and the right people to come into your show so mm -hmm. that that that's what I got from from today's show. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful indeed. And 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 just just to add to the points you're raising, we are anticipating the future. That in the future, you may have some specialists helping you with identify. And we are also saying that it will be good to focus on on these sources so that you guide whoever help you, especially if it's an outsourced function, because they will ask you, where do you want us to look at? And if you have not engaged yourself with that, you might not be able to help them to help you. We mustn't take it for granted that when we watch shows, streaming and talk shows and all this, we, we mustn't take for granted that it's easy to find guests. And that's why sometimes you will find people repeating guests and that that dilutes the value of your brand, of your show if you keep on repeating people because you only go to the small circle of who you know and then it becomes boring for the for the guest. So sourcing, I mean for the for the listeners. So therefore sourcing guests is the top, is number one in the in, in the list of important things to be in control of if you want to be a very progressive and successful uh, streamer or host of shows or anchors of shows. Thank, thank, thanks. And of course, yes, I agree, uh, Umpile. There are many social media platforms you can use depending on the nature of the show. Thank you so much. Uh, Maynard? Yes, thanks, Tarasem. Uh, indeed, uh, my takeaway is on the, on the social media platform, uh, in terms of the LinkedIn, as Divesh has also mentioned, and the professional organizations in terms of our different organizations, the Osaema and others that we can mention few. So the networking part of it indeed is very impactful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, we've seen that there are Bula, but he has said that he has lost his voice. He's here with us in the studio. He's just listening. So, but he has lost his voice. So I'm not going to ask him to say anything unless he wants to drop something in the chat box but other than that it's a uh, half past thank you so much colleagues this was a lovely conversation uh, it's really very important and uh, uh, we don't regret having re having to repeat it because last last week we lost a lot of time because of technical challenges so yeah we are forging ahead uh, next week uh, tuesday same time same platform we will be looking at the unit number 27, conduct 22, which is continuation of sourcing. We are now looking at how do you identify someone as a subject matter expert? I think this is also going to be quite very interesting because this is where now you start looking at the, at the profile, the, 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 the track record of a person. And then, of course, look at the topic that you want to address and, and what makes you conclude that someone that you want to bring to your studio is a subject matter expert? Is it because of the papers they've written in journals or because of what is written about them in public or what you have seen personally uh, in, from them doing or engaging on this topic? Or is it somebody who has written a book and on a topic. So, so again, same way as you have to be very strategic in identifying where you look for, you need to be clear in terms of your show, 
what are the key features or key identifying elements that you look at before you can say somebody's a subject matter expert? Because the, the fact that somebody is called subject matter expert by the public may not necessarily meet your own criteria, right? If you, if you, uh, if you want to bring an engineer to talk about engineering models, whatever, are you going to look at the, at the practical application of that or are you going to look at the theory part of it? What is your show about? So we're going to be looking at that. I, I think it's quite, we can bring various examples of subject matter expertise and, and let's, let's, let's discuss that. I'm sure uh, and that there, there Ramutla could talk about what is a subject matter expert in terms of social services or social work? What do you look at? Um, Umpile in terms of technology, uh, diverse in terms of engineering. There's a various elements at various levels. So we we'll look at that and we we'll look at then you being guided by your goal setting and the and the and, and and the ability to get things done in terms of delivering the expectations of your of your clients. So therefore, the subject matter expert in 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 reality is only relative to what you want to achieve with that guest. Of course, there will be a formal subject matter expert because of what people have studied, what they've done, and what they've specialized in. But in your case, as a host of a show, it's going to be dependent on what goals you want to achieve. So that's quite very interesting and very insightful. So, so we want you to develop the ability to identify and engage subject matter experts for your content in particular. So, yeah. Thank you so much, colleagues, listeners. Thanks for tuning in. That was the Commerza Radio Worldwide, the mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. Our shows are based on the principle called the idea. We inform and entertain, develop and educate, empower and support, associate and network. That's the idea. Please uh, visit our insights online podcast.com to listen to the previous shows. And of course, this particular episode will also be available as a podcast. Thank you so much, colleagues, uh, listeners, uh, until we meet again uh, next week. Those who have just joined late, uh, it's Tuesdays, every evening, 1900 hours, South Africa Standard Time. Uh, hopefully you can, you can join us there. Otherwise, just visit insightsonlinepodcast.com. You will then be able to listen to this episode. You can also go to Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, and just look for Insights Online Podcast. You will have all the units and the contacts from contact, unit number one to where we are now, unit number 26. It's worth listening to. Thank you and goodbye. Take care.